today we're talking about the Smart Spine Fascial Fitness and Exploratory Micro Movement. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're talking about the smart spine, fascial fitness, and exploratory micro movement. The smart spine is such an excellent way to dive into exploratory micro movement. The weight of the smart spine, and especially if the smart spine is warm, can really add literally that extra inch that gets you lengthened on all sides of your spine. So I wanted to read two quotes, one from Robert Schlelp. Um, he says, micro movements are active and specific and can have effects which are not possible with larger macro movements. In doing these coordinated fascial movements, one may even be able to specifically address, for example, between muscle septa deep in the body. And Marie Jose in the Smart Spine Manual talks about the effects of heat on the ligaments of the spine. And she says, spinal ligaments are believed to extend with temperature. This thermal expansion has been quantified to about 0.5 millimeters per lumbar segment, leading to segmental de decompression, increase in space, and an increase in functional range of motion. That's exciting. Because in the Pilates studio, when we are training our clients, when we're strengthening our clients, we don't want to be strengthening and compressing them or teaching them how to brace and compressing their spine. We want to train and strengthen them with more length in the spine. We want to try to create as much room between the respiratory diaphragm and the pelvic floor as possible. And the smart spine is a great, easy way to do that. All right, so on the reformer, I have a sticky. I have a warm, smart spine here waiting. And I'm just going to put my tail at the very end of the smart spine. Feet on the foot plate here. So I want to put my spine right in the center creek of the smart spine. Slowly moving down, head onto the headrest. So this is really talking to all those deep spinal muscles in my lamina groove. And it's also giving me an awareness of weight in the back of my body. And what side of my rib cage really doesn't want to open and fall into the floor. So that's cueing my brain to try to send a little bit more awareness and breath into that side of the rib cage. So we looked at this in a previous episode when we were also talking about exploratory micro movement. And I mentioned the cue about the go-go gadget body. So you're gonna use that again here, but now you have that extra oomph of the smart spine. So you have the weight of the smart spine going into the body, and you have the warmth of the, the smart spine. So here, we press the carriage out again, and I give my client that cue without moving the carriage, I want to see them lengthen through the spine. So I want to see them pulling the tail away from the crown of the head and that they get longer on each side of the spine. So this will increase your go-go gadget body. And then we also looked at the carriage going all the way out and cueing the client as they do a mini bend in the knee to not move the carriage. And so the smart spine and the heat of the smart spine is also going to create more length in the spine. Again, that 0.5 millimeter of length in the ligaments of each vertebrae. That's what we're able to find. 
Another exercise that I really love, and we've looked at it in a way in a previous exercise, is the warm smart spine globe on the head. And having that weight on the head to create more length in the spine. To add into that, you can also, with your clients, use a dowel. So they have the dowel right at the back of their body, and the elbows are forward here. So this shoulder flexion is helping them to really find that equal, that balanced length on both the front and the back of their body, shoulders dripping down the back, and again, it gives them a floor for the back of their body where they can find back of their head, their mid-back, and their sacrum. Now with this, and I'm not gonna try to attempt to do this on my own, but you as the teacher could place that warm, smart spine globe on the top of their head. So along with the guidance of the dowel behind them, they also have this heat and weight on the crown of their head. So as you ask them to tense their fascial corset to find more activation in their flattening abdominal and the length through the back of their body, blooming the sitting bones, right? They're also, they have that awareness of trying to grow that warm globe up, up, up to the ceiling. And it really gives them that nice awareness of what the optimal length of their spine really is. And that awareness of the, the difference when they're not doing that, when they're sitting at their computer or they're sitting at the dining room table, and how much we slump. And giving that to your client and asking them to pay attention to that, the length that they found with the dowel and that globe on the top of their head, and then comparing that, catching themselves during the day, comparing that to how they're sitting at the cafe or how they're sitting at their desk. And when they catch themselves, to try to recreate that feeling, that fascial tensioning around their pelvis and lumbar spine and that length through the spine crown of the head. Elisa and Heather had some questions about the cue slurping the inner thighs into the pelvic floor. Heather wanted some more exercises so she could understand what that cue was to help her feel it and her clients. So two of my favorite ways to embody this cue of slurping the inner thighs into the pelvic floor is of course to use the overball. Right? And I usually do this with my clients when they're in a supine position. So a supine, neutral spine, neutral pelvis with the knees bent and the feet on the floor. But since I'm by myself here, I'm gonna demonstrate it to you in a seated position, which is also a nice way that you can do it. So we'll put the, the overball between the legs and I'll ask my client for an exhale. And on the first part of that exhale, I'm gonna take the ball closest to the knees and I'm gonna just do a gentle tug towards the kneecaps. And so the client and I are playing a little bit of a gentle tug of war. So the client is slurping or drawing the upper inner thighs into the pelvic floor and spine and I'm giving them a counter to that which is gonna bring their awareness uh, to the upper inner thigh and it's gonna deepen that activation. And it's also immediately gonna give them the feeling of their flattening bikini line abdominal all the way into their lower spine, so their, their corset. Another way that you can do this is when you're doing your footwork on the reformer, you can have the overball between the feet not between the legs, because you're gonna be opening and closing the legs on the reformer, but you put the overball between the feet. And as they start to push the carriage out, 
you as the teacher give a gentle tug of the overball towards their toes as they press out through the carriage in opposition. So again, you're giving them that counter to what they're doing with their brain body of lifting their upper inner thighs and lengthening their spine. So those are some, some really good ways that you can find the slurping of the inner thighs into the pelvic floor. That's it for today. If you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning.